Well, we're here via Skype with Matthew Meslenka, who joins us from New York City. But Matthew, of course, the son of David Meslenka, but in his own right, has been active as a wonderful trombone, euphonium performer, but also for so many years now, having been the editor and publisher of his father's music, Engraver. And, of course, at the time of David Meslenka's passing, he leaves Symphony Number no. 10, well, well, maybe halfway completed, I would you say, something like that. And there are uh, notes and sketches and partial scores, piano scores, things that it was certainly a labor of love to stitch it all together and complete the piece. And there was no one in the world who could have done that except for Matthew Mislinka. So thanks for making time to talk with us, and we're having a great time with the piece, Matthew. Um, I'm, glad to be here. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, it's a uh, enormously important work for me personally, and uh, through my journey of working on this piece, I hope to have given back to the community, which has given me so much. Well, let's talk about your journey through working with the piece, uh, and just because there are some people who don't know the details of what you had to work with when you were attempting sure. to construct this. Uh, that had finished, you know, orchestrating and um, you know, completely finished the first movement of the piece. He had uh, orchestrated about half of the second movement with a with a full sketch to finish it. Um, he had a, a pretty decent sketch for the fourth movement, but for the third movement, there was only sort of about a quarter of it that was done in rough sketch, and the rest of it was scattered ideas right. uh, that didn't really have a shape. Sure. And so my job was in large part to imagine what the third movement should be. Which is and to follow the energy that he set up in the beginning and followed all the way through using everything that I knew of his writing methods, of um, his ways of understanding music. Right. Um, it was... A daunting task. I'm sure. Uh, it would have had to have been. But I guess the, in a way, now, after having... Um, we, we did this, I uh, did this in Dallas. You were kind enough to be there for that performance. And, you know, the, the thing that comes, I think becomes apparent to the audience is that this is still a piece that has an architecture and a shape to it that makes perfect sense and seems logical and is not, oh, well, yeah, there's that one movement that doesn't seem to fit with the rest. That must right. have been what Matthew did. That doesn't come off that way at all. I'm glad to hear it. Um, it's a... You know, to my ear, and because I know it so well, I mean, the, the, the joins are clear for me. Right. But uh, I work very hard to make sure that... Uh, Oh, how about this? At the end of the third movement, I had originally written it um, so that it had a really final ending, and it, and it closed the piece, and it closed the movement. It was really emphatic and and um, you know got the job done. Um, but when I looked at it in the context of the whole work, I realized that oh, this you know chops the piece off in the middle, and that fourth movement just doesn't have anything to say anymore, mm -hmm. and as I then went back and I reworked the ending of the third movement to more reflect the, the, the pain of loss and uh, recontextualize that fourth movement, it then becomes this whole journey through the piece. And I'm glad to hear that the structure of it feels natural. Yes, it does. And, uh, you know, and, and maybe a, a, a third before the end of the, of the way toward the end of the third movement as the, the first theme reappears. It sounds so triumphant. And then overlaid with that are these cries uh, yes. from the euphonium. Would you want to talk about that? We're trying not to let the cat too much out of the bag here, but uh, can you speak well, to that? Well, yeah, it's, I think it helps people to understand uh, something of the context here. Um, and the, 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 the core of the third movement is this solo euphonium singing a beautiful song of love. Right. Um, and when I got to that point in the movement, I had felt 
like I had gone through hell to get there, but I'd finally been able to open my heart and to accept this, um, the love that I have for my father and, and to be able to say goodbye to him. And it was a really vulnerable and, and, and painful place to be. And so my original ending for the piece covered that all up. <laughs> like I went, okay, I'm done with that. Let's go and do like literally anything else. Right. <laughs> but you know, as I looked at it more closely, my grief wasn't even close to being processed. Sure. And as I went back um, and I saw the cover that I put over it, I needed the grief to show through. Right. And so what was perfect and sort of artificially generated then became uh, the background for that pain to show through. Sure. Well, I think it's, it's, you know, it's, I think for the audience, that's a jarring moment the first time that they oh, hear yeah. it. You know, uh, there, it's totally unexpected. And then, you know, because it, in, in a way it keeps asserting itself and finally wins out at the end. So uh, it's a highly dramatic moment. Let's talk, I know because we don't have a lot of time here, but let's talk about the ending gesture of the piece also, sure. which is also so incredibly touching, I think. Every morning at Dad's compositional process, he would play and sing through a Bach chorale. Uh, Bach wrote uh, 371 of these, and every day he'd go through another one, or maybe two, and he would sing and play each of the soprano, alto, tenor, and bass lines. Right. And uh, this was his compositional warm-up. And it gave him the ability to um, get into the mental space to be able to write. Right. And at the end of the piece, Dad had originally written three um, discrete chorale statements. And it occurred to me that the final statement needed to be in his voice. Mm -hmm. And it's just a the, the pianist singing, playing, and it's a the, the, the pianist sings the tenor line. Right. In my mind, uh, Dad is about halfway through his morning work and about ready to write the next thing. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was my way of saying this this music isn't going to die. Mm -hmm. His legacy will go on, right. and it's for all of us. Right. It's um, the whole piece is beautiful, and our students have had a wonderful time uh, putting it together in a very quick uh, number of rehearsals. But yet they've um, they're certainly involved uh, fully in the process. So I think this is music that is important. And peace will be played for years and years, you know, by generations of people who weren't as fortunate as I was to, to know you and your father. But I think similar to Derek Cook's version of the Mahler 10th Symphony, um, it's in a way the best that you can do. do you, do you take the elements yes. that are there and put it together and do it the best that you can. This is not the piece that he would have written. Sure. But it is the meeting of our two minds and our two hearts. Right. And it is his gift to me as much as it is my gift to him. And it's a, um, it's a great... This is a project that could very easily have sat on the shelf for 20 years sure. and never gotten done. Exactly. And uh, when I had the opportunity to complete the piece, I canceled everything in my life to make it work. Mm -hmm. And for me, this was an integral part of processing the loss of my father. And of it's an extraordinary final exam, basically. Did I pay attention to what Dad said? Right. <laughs> um, did, I, did I actually understand? And I am grateful to hear that you find it to be a fulfilling work and your students have enjoyed it. And I've been overwhelmed by the response and it's a, a real honor to be able to be part of it. Well, I think you deserve the diploma for being successful in your manual the final <laughs> examination. So thanks for talking with us today, Matthew. Uh, and it's, it's always a pleasure. 
Well, thank you, Jerry. And I really appreciate all the support you've shown um, Dad over the years and the uh, extraordinary musicianship you bring to the table. I Thanks. appreciate that very much. Thanks, Matthew. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.